welcome all so today we are going to start the part 3 which is the last part of this blazer connect 4 game and we are going to declare the winner and reset the game which will be the final stage and if you have liked the blazer game so far and have been hooked into this blazer game so please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon bell so that you can get updates as and when i upload the videos so in this part today i am going to tell you a few tricks and few methods that basically that converts to writing a few methods and a couple of classes that actually helps us to do the logic of or the algorithm to declare the winner and reset the game so i hope you have already seen the first two parts if you have not i strongly recommend you to view the first two parts because this part is based on the first two parts so enjoy now before i move on to visual studio here is a reference to the code author that game as you have seen is duly attributed to the github code of matthew jones he is a contributor on his github.com repository exception not found slash blazor games and the completed game is deployed at blazorgames.net so please have a look at this and now we'll switch over to visual studio so in the second part we have left it at this stage we have got uh, index.razor and a connect4.razor index.razor is of course the default index component which is not of much use in our class in our game but we have already created in the first two part this game piece game board and the piece color all right and last time if you look back to if you recall your second video the second part we have already finished a working game in that part okay so today i am going to start with the data folder and we'll first introduce two classes so the first class is we are going to add a class add class name this class winning play okay so winning play is created for me right and then in this winning play class i have to write these three public properties and one of the public properties i have not created that i am going to create so bear with me please so first is a list of string generic list of string and i will call this winning moves and then another one prop tap tap will give you the shell of this public property which you need to change and then i will call this this will return a evaluation direction enum okay which we are going to write shortly so public evaluation direction and i will call this winning direction now this evaluation direction enum will hold the evaluation in different directions okay so for example left right up up right down down right like that okay so we'll soon discuss about how we are going to evaluate in this lecture so at uh, the last property is public property and this will be of type piece color right so piece color that's also an enum that we have seen in the first lecture itself so i have got to write this evaluation direction so it's asking to, it is showing some potential fix light bulb icon which is pretty common now so i am going to go for this one generate class evaluation direction new file okay 
so it will create the evaluation direction dot cs this is the new class file so all this class will contain is a public enum rather than class i will change this class to golden enum so public enum evaluation direction i will explain this in a bit down right and left so these are the evaluation the direction on which the evaluation has to be computed or evaluated like you know um, should i uh, go for all the four buttons or the four pieces in the up direction or the up right direction or the right direction or the left direction or the down right direction now i will draw a figure which i will show to explain everything about this logic so i got the game board physical game board in front of me now when we say up now in this case um, this is the up direction with reference to any of these disks so this is for example this disk or this button or whatever call this red piece this is the up direction okay and then we have to evaluate for up and right up right direction and then the right direction and then the down right down right and then the left direction okay so if you start from here i think this will be better from somewhere in the middle or here so up right upright right down right left you can say down left so down left is not required which you will soon see okay now i have come to the connect four dot tracer component again and then i'll have to first introduce a winning play instance and call this winning play with camel notation and then i'll have to write a method which is known as this method is i will talk about that's evaluate piece for winner okay so let's go back to the where we left last time so come below that and this will return a winning play object so private so please don't worry i will tell you the logic exactly as it is going to pan out so private winning play evaluate piece for winner and in this method let's actually complete the shell of this method and here i'll just indent it a little bit and this is squiggly line because it is not returning any winning play object which it is expecting so i will soon complete this so there are a few parameters first is an int i parameter and an int j to represent the x and y axis and there is a evaluation direction enum that i will um, introduce i will actually inject or i will uh, introduce as a parameter and then here i will first introduce a game piece instance and call this a current piece which is equal to the board that we have already declared board dot board and for your recollection this is i comma j so these two parameters that is injected into this method 
I will place them supply. So what is this board? This board is a game board type. Okay, game board object, and this game board object has got a game piece. This is two dimensional array. So this is this total thing will be uh, giving me a connect four dot board dot board. So this will actually return a game piece array object. Okay, but I am actually introducing two parameters so this will actually return a game piece okay so this is game piece right so let's get back to the coding once more so if this current piece that i declared if current piece which is of a game piece type dot color So if it is a blank space, it will it should return null. It doesn't return anything. It returns a null. If the current piece is the color of the current piece is black, it should return null. Else, what it should do? So now everything below this is in actually else. So just return null if the current piece color is blank. Current piece is blank actually space. So I'll introduce a few local variable int int in a row equals 1, int i next equals i, int j next equals j. Then there is another variable that I will declare. I will get back to that actually explaining the um, logic or the algorithm to find the winner in a bit. And this will be very straightforward so please hang on with the lecture now winning moves is a it will be stored in a list of string so next is a while loop it starts So in a row less than four, that means if there are, you still don't have four in a row connected together, then what you'll do is put a switch statement actually and switch direction the enums, okay? So the DIR direction is an evaluation direction that is an enum. Okay, so and what will be your case? In this case, it will be pretty straightforward. Evaluation direction that is enum dot the value. Okay, so we'll evaluate for each of the values evaluation direction dot up. So if it is up direction that we are evaluating, so up means you can say that it is you are just imagine it is going up so what it will do is let me write it down and then i will explain okay j next equals j next minus one it is subtracted because we are going up so j is basically representing the y-axis so if you are going up, so y axis is reducing, you know, the value of the y coordinate is reducing up and it is increasing down, right? And then give it a break. So hopefully you know the switch case statements. 
Now, similarly, I'll just copy this part. Oh my God, this is hanging. Okay, so it sometimes uh, doesn't allow it so easily. So, okay, so let's do a few more case. I'll evaluate for all the cases and I'll just copy and paste and then change the code, which is the easiest approach to save a lot of times typing. All right, so this time I'm going to actually, I have evaluated for up direction. So this time this will be let's make it upright so up and right so what do you expect so j next will be still j next minus one it will be incremented but i next what will be the i next i next is i is the x-axis you can think so if you are going to the right basically you are incrementing the x coordinate right so i next equals i next plus one. Does it make sense? So it will further make sense when I tie out, tie up all the things together. I will string up all the methods together in the razor component. Then it will make more sense. So next is next direction that I have to evaluate. You can evaluate any direction in any order, but let's evaluate for right. Now, what will happen if you go to your right? So if you're going to your right, so Y axis will not change, but X axis will be incrementing by one. Okay. So I'll I next, this will be I next equals I next plus one. And then let's evaluate for the left. And what will happen? So if you go left, then I next will be decrementing by one. So I next equals I next minus one. And then the final direction was down right. Down and right. So if you go down, what will happen? With the x-axis and the y-axis so if first you think about down and then right so when you are going down so y-axis will increment right so j next will be j next plus one and at the same time think about the x-axis that is the i next variable so that will also increment right down and right. So if j was increasing up, so j will be, if, if j was decreasing up, j will increase down and i going right, it will increase. Okay. So i next plus one. Right, so this switch case is now over. Now there is a couple of if statements and now in order to save further time, I had something on my clipboard I have just copied. There is a condition. If i next less than zero or i next greater than equal to seven. So if it has exhausted all the columns, if it is it is actually checking the out of bounds condition for the x and the y axis. Similarly, j next less than zero or j next greater, greater than or equal to six, just break out of the loop. Okay. And then that is the breakout of the while loop. And then there is another piece. Now I had to copy and paste this one because that is also a biggish one it would have increased the video time so if board dot board okay if in the game board 
two dimensional array which i am feeding with these two uh, axis x axis and y axis dot color if the color of the game board is the current piece the color of the current piece whether it is red or yellow then in the winning moves which is just a string okay so what is winning moves i have declared this winning moves somewhere here so winning moves was the list of strings right so in the list of strings i am adding this statement this is string interpolation so i next and j next okay the value of these two variables so in the winning moves i am adding uh, which is a list of string this string and then i am incrementing in a row plus plus i mean i am incrementing the variable in a row so i mean if this condition is successful then um, this whether in a row it has started with the one and it is incremented under these conditions till it becomes four in which case it will come out of this while loop right and else so if this was not the uh, current piece color if the board color was not the same as the current piece color it returns a null okay now let's say if uh, all of the pieces are in a straight line in four pieces while in a row is greater than or equal to 4 you have been able to connect four or more pieces just in case so what will happen now let's start writing greater than or equal to 4 if that condition is met connecting 4 then you will add in the winning moves dot add so within this dollar sign and then a pair of um, quotes double quotes whatever you write within this curly braces will be its value will be taken okay its value will be added so within curly braces i comma within curly braces j okay so if in a row is greater than or equal to 4 if it has exceeded 4 then i have added it to the winning move list of string and then the winning condition will be returned so return return new winning play okay and then i will just initialize like this so winning moves and winning direction it has got so winning moves equals winning moves that we have declared earlier and winning color So this is I'll come back to this why this squiggly line current piece dot color okay oh, sorry here it is actually comma and that's why winning color is not coming winning moves winning moves comma winning color equals current piece dot color and winning direction and i still don't have this winning color okay doesn't contain a definition of winning color so where does it come from 
so this is coming from actually the winning play class where piece color oh there is a mistake so i need to change it to winning color color and save it and then go back to the connect four dot tracer component and now it's all right current piece dot color and winning direction equals dir the return argument the argument that was entered to this and then finally close this block with a semicolon okay so if this is true return winning play else return null don't return anything return null okay so i have now built it it's like always a good idea to build it after a reaching some milestone after writing a method just to see everything is all right and nothing is broken so which i have done already so now next part is now next part is a method that i will name as get winner okay that will actually get the winner and it will call the evaluation direction it will call this evaluate piece for winner it will evaluate the piece and then declare the winner so that's very critical so private this will be a private and it will return a winning play and i'll call this get winner so the squiggly line because i am not returning anything at the moment so now there is winning play i will have to initialize a type winning play object and i will just initialize because i don't have anything at the moment so i will just initialize with null and then a for each for loop uh, you know for loop within a for loop okay so i'll just do the shell of the for loop first and inner for loop and outer for loop and in the outer for loop this will be i less than 7 this is evaluated this is actually iterated over the number of columns which are 7 and the interior for loop will be evaluated over the number of rows so j equals 0 so j less than what number of rows which is 6 okay and then j plus plus so a loop within a loop for loop within a for loop and then start writing within the inner for loop now i will make use of this winning play instance which is and i will call this evaluate piece for winner and what this is expecting two integers argument of i and j and then a evaluation direction in a so what i will do is i will make uh, i will pass these arguments i and j the local counters variables i and j and then evaluation direction who dot say up one by one all of these okay and then make use of this winning play instance if the winning play instance is not null then you return the winning play i think you get the gist right so you're all most of you are experienced programmers i guess so return winning play okay it is just null checking with this method evaluate piece for winner by supplying these local arguments and evaluation direction and then checking if it is not null return the winning play right so similarly there's similar block of a few more statements so i'll just copy this part
control C then again then again then again then again so I am evaluating five directions all right so all that you are left with is just to check the directions upright okay up upright and then say right you have guessed correctly down right and our intelligence is so intelligent that it is actually dictating us it's telling us to fill up these evaluation directions okay and then you're getting there you come out of the inner for loop come out of the outer for loop and then return what this is just return the winning play so return the winning play so end of the method so i've got two major methods evaluate piece for winner and then get winner and there are a couple of small you know uh, less important but very important so that you know you can actually reset the game and you can um, decide who is the winner by highlighting so let's get back to the those two methods so please follow me i will start explaining once i am finished now this i want this method to return a boolean So this method is is game piece a winning piece okay it will evaluate each of these game pieces to check whether this is a winner winning piece or not say winning play i'll shortly tell you what i mean exactly in a bit int i Now, when, when I say this, evaluate for a, um, with a method named, so this name is suggestive, is this game piece a winning piece? So I have been able to say, for example, going back to the actual board. So supposing I have already filled these four pieces, okay? And then I'm going to see the fifth here on this column that this piece the fifth from the bottom so is this piece a winning piece this is what we are getting evaluated in this method okay now all that will return this will be returning a winning play which we have actually put to this method as an argument if winning play which is nullable dot winning moves dot i'll make use of this contains method I'll explain that in a bit. I J and let's write a ternary operator false. Right, is this meaning clear? So it says that return the this expression the result of this expression whether it is a false or a true because it is supposed to return uh, a boolean from this method so if it succeeds 
if this if the winning play and the winning moves contain i comma j okay these two then this game is if it's over it's a, it's a it's a true it's a boolean is evaluated to true that means the game piece is a, is a winning piece else it returns a false okay in the code part so let's write a private method so private void reset and how do you reset the game it's pretty easy so the board is the board uh, which is a uh, I, I mean it was a game board instance is actually initialized reinitialized to a new game board and then current turn is it becomes it resets to a red color because red is the person red is the uh, i mean the, the player who starts it starts with the red button okay and then winning play becomes null because it's reset there is no winning play the winning play is now that play is reset to a new play now all that is left is to do a bit of cleaning up over here to include these methods okay now coming back to the markup for this current turn not razor component current turn component what i have to do earlier we have written with an h2 header current turns turn so current turn was evaluated from here so if it was red turn it used to be yellow turn after calling the switch turns method now here which was called by this piece click method but now i have got to incorporate i have got to include the winning play also so what we'll do is we'll start writing from here just above this h2 so at the rate if not winning play i mean if winning play is not null if there is a winner if the winning play exists then do this uh, put a h2 header over here and within h2 and end h2 because this part is c sharp code but we need to write something on the browser render something on the browser that which player is winning so and start writing at winning play dot now here you got winning color so this will be either yellow or red or red or yellow okay so this red or red wins or yellow wins okay and then within this header itself there will be a button that will be a reset button so button and what will be the class of this button so because this is a winner it is going to declare so button btn success so btn btn success and what else this will be calling the reset method which you have just finished writing so at on click so on click of the button at on click it will call within double quotes automatically it create it for you empty double quotes so within the braces circular braces what it will do uh another pair of circular brace and this will be lambda operator it actually calls the reset 
method here right so reset method is called here and all that you need to write and now this button end will be there let's end this button over here button tag right and between the button end and button start tag you write the word reset so this will be reset button now this will put in the else if there is no winner then it will declare the current turn the player who has the current turn so all that you need to do is just bring it up delete it from here and then put it in the else branch okay and save your work repeatedly all right and then what is left very little is left now so here i have already this code div class board which contains another div class column so this is the board class which has the entire this is the outer div and here we have got the outer for loop with the column counter starting and within this outer for loop there is the inner for loop which actually puts the columns okay uh, with the with the with the rows right rather you know it it iterates over the number of rows okay so div class this part is all right now here this class is finishing over here this was on click it was calling the piece clicked method all right so that we have seen in the last lecture now finally i have to put a style so that you know the if it is a winning piece if the game piece is a winning piece then the winning piece will be it will make the board opaque just to highlight the winning piece okay the winning combination of four in a row so what i will do here is because there is no particular class given for this uh, winning combination so i'll just put a style over there to make it opaque okay with a transparency of 0.6 if it is a winning piece hmm. so if i mean the last button or last piece that makes all four in a row whether up or down or diagonally across then that will create a style to make the opacity to 0.6 okay so that's what it is going to do i'll call this is game piece a uh, winning piece this method and then supply these arguments now let's evaluate in a single expression with the ternary operators so if this is true then what will happen the style will have a uh, opacity opacity is also a style how much opaque it is so let's make it 0.6 or 60% and if it is not a winning piece then there is be no style okay now i have got rid of those stubborn squiggly lines by indenting it properly so i put this brace which is enclosing the at the rate this statement okay and then this ternary operator says that you know if it is a winning piece the last game piece that was uh, put by one of the two players if it makes a winning piece then the it will be opaque and opacity is 0.6 and otherwise no style will be employed because the game is still not finished okay so that's all 
Now that's all for the day. So if the everything is all right, let's build this or just right click this IAS Express to run this game to see if everything is all right. The game is happening as per what we expect it to. I'll come back in a second. So there are some errors. No. Some semicolon was expected somewhere. I'll come back in a second after resolving this. So the error were here actually. You don't need to put a semicolon outside this curly braces. You have to terminate the statement over here. So some small typos are there. Return winning play. That is the end of this statement and then get rid of the outer semicolon, get rid of the outer semicolon and get rid of this and put a semicolon over here. So all that remains to be done is to complete this piece clicked method, which I am now going to complete. So here there's an if statement. Just follow me around. If winning play not equals null, then what do you do? You return from the method. Okay. So if there is a winning play, that means if it is not null. All right. So return. And then after this clicked space field, you just call the get winner method, which we have not used so far. So winning play equals this get winner method, the output, the return of the return value of the get winner method. Okay. So which is actually a winning play type. All right. And then finally come out of this if loop and then um, outer if loop. All right. So again call the get winner method winning play equals get winner if winning play equals null then switch turns call the switch turns method. So if the winning play is null, if it is winner is still not declared, then just switch up the turns, swap the turns from red to yellow and vice versa. And I would say that that's all. So let's run the application and see what happens. So the application is loaded. Let me play the game. red wins. I can reset the game, but you see it has still not been highlighted. It has not become opaque. So why? Let's investigate. So I can reset the game. And in fact, let me close the browser. And so what happens here that I've got a small typo, which I wanted to bring to your limelight. That was, you know, in this contains method. So winning play dot winning moves dot contains method. It is expecting a string. All right. Now in this string, this uh, string in interpolation dollar sign. So within double quotes, whatever is enclosed is a string. So the, this is the value of I and this is the value of J, whether it is five, six or two, three or whatever. But here, see, there is a gap which was inadvertently introduced. So this is a white space, which is making the string corrupt. I don't want that high, uh, this white space. So if I get rid of this and then rebuild or run the application again and let's see the fun. Application is loaded again. Yellow's turn, red's turn, yellow's turn, red's turn, yellow's turn, red's turn. Lo and behold, so this has become opaque. 0.6 opacity is now working because of that uh, debugging that error, uh, correcting it. So that's all.
Thank you very much for being part of this uh, three part series of Blazor games. Hope you have liked it. So please subscribe to my channel if you could make your way through this end of this tutorial third part. Please share my channel with your friends and relatives and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon notification so that I can bring you more such valuable stuff and whenever I upload a new video you are immediately notified. Thank you very much.